Greetings ladies and gents, it's Jake here. And as I'm sure you know, the Arkhamverse is chock full of many details and secrets. In fact, there's so many nifty details that even the most dedicated players have yet to find them all. And that's exactly what we're here to resolve today. For today's investigation, we're heading to the part of Gotham that's become a playground for the city's worst criminals. Everyone buckle up and let's hit the streets with five secrets of Arkham in Batman Arkham Knight. Part 3! Starting off, we're heading to Wayne Tower, which also happens to be where we started the last Arkham Knight video. Funny how that turned out. If you head over to the bookshelf and interact with the bust of William Shakespeare, which is taken right from the Adam West Batman show, you will notice two cases rising up from the floor. One of the cases containing a bat suit, and the other containing an array of weapons. However, during the side mission, Friend in Need, when the player takes control of Thomas Elliot, who's disguised as Bruce Wayne, you'll actually find that you cannot interact with the Shakespearean bust. The devs likely included this detail to get players thinking that something suspicious might be happening, as it is not yet revealed to the player that they are controlling Thomas Elliot rather than Bruce Wayne. I personally thought that this was great attention to detail and have to applaud the devs for applying a safeguard so that Bruce Wayne's most bitter enemy wouldn't discover his deepest secret. Now this would end up being null and void a few minutes later anyway, but it's still a cool detail nonetheless. Next on the list, we're staying on Miyagani Island for the time being. If you head into the morgue of the Elliott Memorial Hospital, you'll notice a number of open mortuary cabinets with bodies that you can identify in detective mode. Well, if you follow the path being shown on the screen, you'll notice a closed mortuary cabinet with the name John Goodman clearly visible on a folder. Now this is of course a clear reference to the famous actor John Goodman, but I want to throw something else your way. If any of you watching remember the movie 10 Cloverfield Lane, which stars John Goodman, you may remember that the overall plot of the movie revolves around a chemical attack that has rendered the air unbreathable. For those of you that haven't been able to add two and two already, this shares a lot of similarities with the Cloudburst plot point in Arkham Knight. Now I know all of this is reaching, especially since 10 Cloverfield Lane came out after this game, but I think it's still a pretty hilarious coincidence. Third on the list, we're going to take a look at Azrael, who spends the duration of the game training to become Batman's worthy successor. Azrael has to successfully complete four combat challenges before Batman considers him a potential candidate. However, since we never have any Predator encounters with Azrael in the main game, if you take him onto a Predator challenge map and apply your explosive gel to any surface, you'll see that instead of making a bat shape like Batman would do, Azrael will instead place his gel in the form of a cross, which is indicative of both the insignia on his armor and the Order of Saint Dumas that he serves. This is definitely a detail that the devs didn't have to include, but I'm certainly glad that they did. Nearing the end at number 4, we're heading underneath Founders Island. During the final confrontation you have with the Arkham Knight prior to his reveal, he ambushes you in the tunnels with his biggest attack vehicle yet. After making his presence known, the Arkham Knight will say this. I did ask if it came in black, but then I thought, ah, you just get all jealous. Now I think it's likely that this line was a small nod to Batman Begins, specifically the part where Bruce Wayne and Lucius Fox are taking a camo colored tumbler for a test drive. After the test is concluded, Bruce Wayne shows his admiration of the vehicle and asks, does it come in black? I think it's very likely that the devs were inspired by Nolan's Batman films, as they not only made the Batmobile an attack car like Nolan did, but also threw in a line of dialogue referencing their potential inspiration. And finally, last on our list, we're returning to the surface and heading to Bleak Island. If you head to the clock tower and follow the path being shown now, 
you'll notice a computer displaying a conversation between Oracle and someone else who is clearly the Huntress, in which the latter is asked to find BC, which is clearly Black Canary. Additionally, the name Birds of Prey is clearly visible on the desktop background. This is a very clear nod to the Birds of Prey, the group of femme fatales generally led by Barbara Gordon. Huntress and Black Canary are almost always a member in every version of this team, and judging by this conversation, it's clear that both of them are established heroes in the Arkhamverse, and that they're both helping Oracle from the outside to keep the citizens of Gotham safe. And with that, another episode comes to a close. Five Secrets of Arkham in Batman Arkham Knight Part 3 Thank you all for watching this episode, and I hope you enjoyed yourselves. If that was the case, please throw your batarangs at the like button, glide down to the comments and leave your thoughts, do a multi-ground takedown on that share button, and quick fire that subscribe button if you'd like to see more. Peace out, Gothamites.